couple days, so as we're all stuck at home for the foreseeable future, uh, I've had a couple of requests to make some videos so that we can practice in the comfort of your own home. Uh, mostly from my mum, I have to say, but hopefully some others will find it helpful too. Um, this first class is suitable for all levels, so I'll give options throughout. Um, this is a bit of a full body workout, so not directly targeting any one point in the body, but um, working through the whole body. We're going to start in a seat, and as always, you can use a block if you've got one at home, or a cushion, or even a couple of books just to stack up under yourself if that's helpful for you. So finding a comfortable seated position. And when you're ready, just resting the hands, either palms facing up or down onto the knees. Closing down the eyes. And looking for some lift and length through the spine. So seeing if you can start to root down through the sitting bones. Thinking about reaching up through the crown of the head. And softening the shoulders away from the ears as you exhale. Bringing a gentle engagement into the core to support you here in this position. And when you're ready, just starting to bring your awareness to the breath. So you might find it helpful to find one point in your body that you can feel the breath moving most vividly. It might be the belly rising and falling, or the chest and the ribs expanding and contracting. Maybe bringing your awareness to the tip of your nose Feeling the breath flowing in and out through your nostrils. And just noticing how the breath is initially, so whether it's short and shallow or long and deep. And then gradually seeing if you can start to deepen the breath. Matching the length of the inhalation and the exhalation. Starting to create a smooth, even breathing pattern deep into the belly. Breathing in and out through the nostrils. And we're trying to maintain this breath throughout the practice. And finally, just taking a moment to Notice any activity in the mind right now. So there might be some leftover thoughts from the rest of your day. Just noticing whatever is arising here for you. Trying not to attach to thoughts, just recognizing them as they appear. Maybe bringing some attention to the quality of the thought. So you might be drifting into planning mode or time traveling into the past or the future. Just noticing whatever is going on here for you right now. And then seeing if you can start to allow those thoughts to drift away. Bringing your focus back to the breath back to the body sitting here now in this moment. Bring the hands together at the heart center. 
gently dropping the chin towards the chest and fluttering the eyelids open. Bringing the head back to centre and removing the block or the cushion from underneath you. Making your way down onto your spine. So bringing the feet hip width distance apart here. And the hands come either side of the hips. So maybe just taking a moment to check out where your feet are. So making sure that you can touch the backs of the ankles with the fingers. If you can't, then shuffling the feet slightly closer towards the bum. We're going to lift into a bridge pose here. So making sure the feet are parallel. Taking an inhale into the belly. And as we exhale, starting to press into the feet, peeling the hips away from the mat, and rolling all the way up through the spine. So we're really seeing if you can keep rooting down through the feet, noticing if you're rolling onto the little toe side of the foot, really keep pressing down into the whole of the foot, especially the big toe side, and then seeing if you can start to engage into the inner thighs. So imagine that there's a block in between the thighs and you're squeezing it, trying to keep it in position. Engaging into the glutes as well. And keep lifting the chest towards the chin. And then as you exhale, starting to roll all the way back down through the spine. See if you can articulate through each vertebrae as you come down. Engaging the core as you make your way through the mid spine, especially. And then coming back to a neutral position, taking a breath here to reset. And then again on the next inhale, pressing into the feet, starting to peel the hips away, rolling all the way back up through the spine, lifting the hips away from the mat. Maybe bringing yourself a little bit higher this time so you might start to Roll the shoulder blades in towards each other, pressing more into the feet, engaging more into the legs and the glutes, lifting the hips higher, and then exhaling, rolling all the way back down. Again, just taking a breath when you come back to your neutral position on the mat. Checking back in with the feet. And then on the next inhale, lifting all the way back up again. So this time you can stay here if this is enough for you. If you want to add on, we're going to start to transfer the weight into the left foot, coming light onto the right foot. And when you feel comfortable to do so, lifting that right foot away. We're going to bring the right ankle over the top of the left thigh. So we're creating this figure four shape with the legs. And then we see if we can keep pressing the lower part of that right leg into the top of the thigh, continuing to open out through that right foot. Keep pressing into the left foot, lifting the hips high. And then as you exhale, starting to roll all the way back down, keeping the legs as they are. So here, once we come back to the mat, there's a couple of options again. So you can just stay here, pressing the lower part of that right leg into the top of the thigh. If you want more, then starting to draw the legs in towards the chest. So make sure you're flexing through both feet and then option to thread the hands through. So either grabbing the back of the left thigh or if it's available for you, you might bring the hands around the shin. Tucking the chin towards the chest, taking an inhale, thinking about lengthening through the spine. And then as you exhale, drawing the legs closer in towards the chest, any amount. You can just continue to ride the breath here. So as you inhale, backing away with the legs, exhaling, squeezing them closer. Inhaling, backing away. Exhaling, drawing in. Looking for some more opening into that right hip. Using the breath to bring yourself deeper. And 
And then on the next exhale, releasing your grip around that left leg, starting to flex the left foot up towards the ceiling. We're gonna bring some momentum into the body here to lift ourselves up to a seat. If that's not gonna work for you, then just releasing the legs, rocking yourself up. Otherwise, taking a little rock, rock back and then lifting yourself up. So hopefully you've still got this kind of four shape with the legs. From here, we're gonna release the right foot to the inside edge of the left thigh. So coming into Janu Sasasana, bringing the fingertips either side of that left leg and just using them as anchors to lift up further through the spine before we fold forwards. And seeing if you can start to turn the torso so it's facing directly towards that left leg. Inhaling the arms up. And then as you exhale, starting to hinge forwards over that left leg and the mat. So you can rest the fingertips either side of the left leg. You can place the hands on top of the leg. Or if it's available for you, you might grab the foot or the ankle. But don't worry about getting really low over the leg here. We're more concerned with keeping a nice length through the spine, trying to get rid of any rounding through the shoulders. So again, inhaling for length, lifting up through the crown of the head. As you exhale, maybe hinging further forwards, thinking about reaching the chest forwards. And then on the next inhale, lifting the chest back up to center. From here, we're gonna take a little twist. So I'll just turn around so you can see. So from here, we're gonna bring the hands either side of this right knee, just to lift the bum up slightly so that the chest starts to turn further towards the right knee. And then options here, you can bring the left hand anywhere down the left leg. Or if you want to get deeper into the twist, you can bring the left hand to the right knee. And then inhaling the right hand up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, thinking about coming up and over the head with that right hand. So imagine that you're trying to bring the fingertips towards the toes on the left foot. But also keep opening the chest up towards the ceiling. So spiraling open the chest, drawing it up towards the ceiling, looking for a nice, Stretch all the way down the right side of the body. And then just sending the breath to wherever you're feeling this. So long, deep waves of breath. On the next inhale, bringing yourself back up to center. And from here, keeping the legs as they are, we're gonna bring the right hand about a hand's distance away from the right hip. Fingertips are pointing towards the back of the mat, if you're still in the same position. Um, and then as you inhale, we're gonna lift the hips away from the mat. So pressing into that right hand as you inhale, start to lift the hips, point through the toes on the left foot, and then sweep that left hand up and over the head, coming into a gentle back bend, or you can make it quite a deep back bend the more you take that left hand up and over the head. And then as you exhale, bringing yourself all the way back down to the mat. And we'll do two more of those. So inhaling, pressing into that right hand, lifting the hips, reaching the left hand up and over the head. And then exhaling, bringing the bum back down to the mat. One more, inhale, lift up. And then exhale to lower. Again, keeping the legs as they are, or the right leg as it is, we're gonna to start to bend into the left knee and take that left foot back behind. So we're creating this zigzag shape through the legs. The sole of the right foot is in towards the top of the left thigh. And then we're gonna take a twist to the right. So the left hand comes to the right knee, right fingertips behind the back. And then inhaling, lifting up through the crown of the head. As you exhale, twisting yourself deeper. So sending the twist from the mid spine, thinking about drawing belly button in towards spine. 
And just noticing if you're leaning back into that right hand, keep reaching up through the crown of the head. Inhaling, bringing yourself back to center. Keeping the right leg as it is, we're gonna swing this left leg around the front and bring it on top. So coming back into a cross leg position. If this doesn't work for you, then taking the legs further away and just crossing out the ankles. So when you're ready, inhaling the arms up. Looking for some length through the sides of the body, really reaching up through the fingertips. And as you exhale, starting to hinge forwards over the hips. So keep reaching the chest as far forwards as you can and then begin to fold in. So resting the fingertips down anywhere on the mat. And again, just using your breath to bring yourself deeper. So each time you inhale, reaching the crown of the head further forwards, lengthening through the spine, exhaling, hinging further forwards over the hips. On the next inhale, lifting the chest, walking the fingertips back towards the body. When you're ready, we're going to make our way back onto our spine. So coming all the way back down, keeping that bend into the knees, we're going to make our way back into another bridge pose. So rolling down. And again, just taking the moment to set your feet up here. So making sure the feet are hip width distance apart. Checking out your position, bringing the fingertips to the backs of the ankles, giving them a little tickle, making sure they're in the right place. If you can't touch the backs of the feet, then just walking the feet closer towards the bum. Hands either side of the hips. On the next inhale, pressing into the feet, starting to peel the hips away from the mat. Rolling all the way up towards the shoulders, maybe rolling the shoulder blades in towards each other. Keep pressing into the feet, engaging into the inner thighs, switching on the glutes, squeezing the bum. And then exhaling, rolling all the way back down through the spine. And then taking a breath at the bottom, gathering energy. And on the next inhale, pressing into the feet, peeling the hips away from the mat, lifting all the way up. Keep working the chest up towards the chin. And then exhaling, rolling all the way back down. Taking one more of those when you're ready, inhaling, pressing into the feet, lifting up. This time, if you want to add on here, pressing into the right foot. When you're ready, lifting that left foot away from the mat, bringing the ankle over the top of the left, oh sorry, right thigh. Pressing the lower part of that left leg into the top of the right thigh, opening out through the left hip. Keeping this figure four shape with the legs as you start to roll the spine back down to the mat. Again, you can stay here if this is enough for you, just working on opening out that left hip. Keep pressing the lower part of that left leg into the right thigh. You'll notice that left hip starts to open more as you do that. If you want to add on, start to draw the legs towards the chest, thread the hands through, grab around the back of the right thigh, or if it's available for you, and this is much deeper, bring the hands around the right shin. Making sure you're flexing through both feet, inhaling, tucking the chin towards the chest, lengthening through the spine, 
As you exhale, drawing your legs in towards the chest, any amount. Inhale, back away slightly. Exhale to squeeze the legs in. So just continuing in this way, riding the breath. On the next exhale, releasing your grip around that right leg, straightening out the leg, flexing that right foot towards the ceiling. So again, there's two options here. You can find some momentum and rock yourself up, keeping this figure four shape. If you need to, then just unravel the legs and bring yourself up in this way. Otherwise, taking that right foot up and over the head, maybe, so that you can lift yourself up to a seat. So when you arrive in this position, releasing the sole of the left foot to the inside edge of that right thigh. Coming into Janu Sasasana on the other side. So fingertips either side of that right leg, just to use, a, use an anchor to reach up through the crown of the head. So we're using this to look for more length through the spine. And then inhaling the arms up. As you exhale, hinging forwards over that right leg. So again, resting the hands on top of the right leg, wherever they land. Fingertips can stay either side of the right leg, or you can grab the ankle or the foot if it's available for you. But remember that we're not really worried about getting super low over this right leg. We want to keep this length and lift through the spine. Drawing the shoulders away from the ears if you can. On the next inhale, lifting the chest. So this time, Returning towards the left knee. So fingertips either side of that left knee, just lifting yourself up slightly so that you can start to turn the chest further towards that left knee. And then the right hand is coming anywhere down the right leg. Or if you want to get deeper into that twist, the right hand to left knee. Inhaling the left hand up. And as you exhale, taking it up and over the head any amount. Spiraling the chest towards the ceiling so keep opening out. And really in this position we're just looking for a nice stretch down the left side of the body. So don't worry about getting that hand right up and over the head. You can keep a bend into the elbow even if it's better for your shoulder. On the next inhale, lifting yourself back up to centre. As you lift up, planting that left hand about a hand's distance away from the left hip, fingertips pointing towards the back of the mat. So as you inhale, we're going to press into that left hand, start to lift the hips, sweep the right hand up and over the head, point through the toes on the right foot, take that back leg as deep as you like, and then exhale, bringing the bum back to the mat. Two more of those, inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. One more, inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Keeping that left leg as it is, take the right foot back behind you, bending into the right knee. So left sole of foot is to the inside edge of the right thigh. And we've got this zigzag shape through the legs. So taking a twist to the left now, right hand comes to left knee, left fingertips behind the back. Inhaling, lifting up through the crown of the head. As you exhale, twisting yourself deeper, any amount. And again, just sending the breath to wherever you're feeling this. So for me, it's on my right hip.
inhaling, bringing yourself back to center. And then taking that cross leg position, but this time seeing if you can bring the other leg on top. So it would be the right leg on top of the left leg if you can this time. Again, if you need to, taking the leg slightly further away. And you can just cross up the ankles. Inhaling the arms up. And as you exhale, hinging forwards over the hips, keep reaching the chest as far forwards as you can, and then folding in any length. So in this position, if it feels like you're going nowhere, don't worry. Just keep thinking about the length through the spine rather than getting really low over the hips. So if you find that you're rounding a lot through the shoulders, just keep seeing if you can soften the shoulders away from the ears. Length through the crown of the head or through the spine, reaching up through the crown of the head. Exhaling for depth. On the next inhale, lifting the chest, walking the hands back towards the body. And then we're going to make our way over to tabletop position. So you might roll over the knees here or just make your, your own way there and whatever way feels good for you. So setting yourself up here in your tabletop position, we want the hand shoulder width apart. Knees are hip width distance apart. So hands are directly underneath the shoulders or thereabouts. We're just gonna make our way through a couple of rounds of cat-cow. So as you inhale, starting to drop the belly towards the mat, reaching the sitting bones high, and then we're pressing the chest through the arms, gazing up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, starting to press into the hands, rounding through the shoulders. So tucking the chin towards the chest, Drawing navel towards spine, tucking the tailbone under, really press into the hands, round through the shoulders, spread the shoulder blades nice and wide. And then inhale, drop the belly, gaze up. Exhale to round. Inhale, gaze up. Press the chest through the arms. Exhale to round. So you can continue through these two movements just for a few more rounds using your own breath. If you want to make this movement a little bit more fluid, then as you inhale, you might start to bring the bum towards the heels, gaze up. And then as you exhale, starting to pull the weight forwards all the way into the fingertips, round through the shoulders. Inhale. Bum towards heels, gaze up. Exhale, round forwards. So just doing whatever feels good for you, maybe these movements or just staying with your normal cat cow. And on your next inhale, we're going to come back to a neutral spine. Bring the knees together now, and to the ankles, and bring the bum towards the heels. So if this position is enough for you, just sitting back onto the heels, because this can be quite intense, you can stay here. If you want to add on, we're going to bring the fingertips behind the back, start to puff up the chest. And maybe you will start to lean back into the fingertips, maybe not. If you want more, there's the option to bend into the elbows slightly, hovering the knees away from the mat. So taking a stretch into the tops of the feet. And then as you exhale, coming forwards, you're going to bring the hands to the ankles or the feet, and then start to lower the crown of the head towards the floor. If you want more here, Start to press into the crown of the head, 
lifting the hips away from the heels, only a mouth. And then exhale to lower back down. Inhale to lift the chest. And again, start to move the back if that's okay for you. If you want more, you might bring your hands to heart centre here. Bring your weight further back towards the toes, lifting your, uh, the knees a little bit higher. And then exhaling to move forwards. Grabbing your heels, lowering the crown of the head to the mat. Lifting the hips. One more, exhale to drop the bum. Inhale, lift the chest. Bring the fingertips behind the back. Pop up the chest. Stay here if this is enough for you, or start to bring the weight into the tops of the feet. Maybe bring your hands together at the heart. Come forwards when you're ready. Grab the heels, lower the crown of the head. So if this is enough for you, definitely stay here. If you want more, press on to the crown of the head, lifting the hips. And then lowering the bum back to the heels, lifting the chest. When you're ready, making your way back to the tabletop position. And tucking the toes, we're going to come back to our first downward facing dog. So pressing into the toes. Start to hover the knees away from your mat and then begin to reach the sitting bones high, right through to the backs of the legs and the backs of the feet. And cuddling out the feet here, making any movements that you need to to get as comfortable as you can in your inverted V shape. So just spending a moment to set yourself up here. We want the hands shoulder width apart, feet hip width distance apart. And we're pressing forwards and down into the hands and using that pressure to keep sending the chest back towards the tops of the thighs, drawing the shoulders away from the ears, energetically working the backs of the feet down towards the mat. But don't worry about getting the feet completely flat. So we're more concerned with taking the creases out of the ankles if we can. So thinking about pressing the backs of the feet back and away from you creating space through the ankles. Equal distribution of weight between the hands and the feet. So just noticing if you feel like you're more in a plank position like this, and you've got lots of weight going into the hands, and just take your hands a little bit further back towards the feet. So when you've made all of your movements, come into some stillness here on the mat. On the next inhale, coming high into the tiptoes, start to walk both feet all the way up to the top of the mat. When you arrive, taking a nice deep bend into the knees, grabbing opposite elbows, allowing the belly to rest on the tops of the thighs. And just relaxing the crown of the head down towards the mat. Allowing the head and the neck to get heavy here, you can sway from side to side. Shake out the head, yes and no, knee to the rag doll, releasing any tension. Want more <coughs> length down the backs of the legs, starting to pull the weight forwards, more into the toes, lowering the crown of the head further down towards the floor. <coughs> Maybe taking a cleansing breath here and inhale into the belly. Sorry, everything out through the mouth. On the next exhale, releasing the grip on the elbows, we're going to lift up the Utkatasana and chair pose. So, making sure the feet are hip width distance apart, start to take a bend into the knees and then reach the hands high. So, keeping that bend into the knees, just checking out. The toes, making sure you can see them poking out in front of the knees, softening the shoulders away from the ears. See if you can knit the lower ribs towards each other so you're really engaging into your core. 
Bring them on the next inhale, pressing into the feet, straightening out the legs. Exhaling, releasing the hands either side of the body. I'm going to take a side stretch here, so inhaling the arms up. Grabbing the left wrist with the right hand. See so if you can press that left palm towards the ceiling. <clears throat> Inhale, really reach up through the sides of the body. As you exhale, start to send the hips over to the left. Reach the hands up and over the head to the right. Keep rooting down through the big toes. Inhaling back to centre. Switching hands, so this time grabbing the right wrist with the left hand, pressing that right palm towards the ceiling, straightening out the arms, softening the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale to lift, exhale, coming up and over the head to the left this time, maybe taking the gaze towards the ceiling. Inhaling back to centre, exhaling, releasing the hands. Come into the top of your mat when you're ready. We're going to make our way through a couple of rounds of sun salutation. <clears throat> so bringing the big toes to touch, heels slightly apart, coming into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Kind of rooting down through the feet, engaging into the legs, so drawing the inner thighs towards each other, belly button, squeezing them towards the spine. Maybe shrug the shoulders up towards the ears and then exhale, release them down the back. Palms facing forwards. Inhaling the arms up and over the head, gazing up to the thumbs, maybe taking a gentle back bend. As you exhale, folding forwards over the hips. So thinking about reaching the chest as far forwards as you can before you start to fall forwards. Inhaling to a halfway lift. So we're reaching the crown of the head forward, fingertips can stay on the mat here, hands come to the shins and the thighs, wherever you are, looking for a nice length through the spine, drawing the shoulders back away from the ears. On the next exhale, picking up the left foot, stepping it all the way back behind you, and then lowering down onto the left knee, keeping the toes tucked, inhaling into your main pose, sweeping the fingertips towards the ceiling. As you exhale, you might get a little bit deeper into the hips, just be really mindful of that right knee. Make sure you're not pouring all the way over that right ankle. So as you get deeper into the hips, you want your upper body to come up and back slightly. As you exhale, come forwards with the chest, plant the hands on the side of that right foot, start to press into the toes on the left foot, step the right foot back to the downward facing dog. On the next inhale, waving forwards into a high plank. So shoulders come over the wrist, we're tucking the tailbone, pressing into the hands, rounding through the shoulders. If you need to, you can drop straight onto the knees, otherwise just holding for a moment. And then everybody dropping onto the knees. Start to bend into the elbows, keep the elbows squeezing into the sides of the body as you reach the sitting bones high and lower the chest and the chin towards the mat. As you inhale, press into the hands, slide the chest through, lowering onto your belly, untucking the toes. There's a couple of options here, so you can either come into a gentle back bend, it would be coming into a baby cobra, hopping the hands away from the mat, or you can press into the hands, lifting into cobra. So either keeping a bend into the elbows here, or straightening out the arms, pressing the pubic bone down into the mat, softening the shoulders away from the ears. As you exhale, we're going to make our way back to downward facing dog. So you can either come straight back, tucking your toes and engaging your core, or you can make your way back to the tabletop and then pressing it. On the next inhale, picking up the left foot, sweeping it high into your three legged dog. So you can keep the hips square here, so pointing the toes on that left foot down towards the mat rather than opening up like this. When you're ready, come forward to the tiptoes on the right foot, bend into that left knee, 
Yeah, I'm going to drag it up to the top of the mat. So if you need to, you can shuffle it down using your left hand and then lower down onto the right knee. Then hold on into your knee pose. Again, exhale, maybe getting a little bit deeper into the hips. On the next exhale, planting the fingertips either side of that left foot. Start to press into the toes on the right foot, straighten out those legs so that you can step right foot up to the top of the leg. Inhale into your halfway lift. Exhale and fall over the hips. On the next inhale, press into the feet. Sweep your hands up and over your head, gaze up to your thumbs. Exhale, hands to the heart. Holding one more of those on the other side. Inhaling, sweeping the hands up and over the head, gazing up to your thumbs. Exhale, folding forward, squeezing the hips. Inhale to the heart of the lift, reaching the crown of the head forward. As you exhale, this time picking up the right foot, stepping. Get all the way back behind you and now you're down onto the right knee. Inhaling the arms up into your knee pose. And as you exhale, come forward, planting the hands or the fingertips by the side of that left foot. And now you're pressing into the toes on that right foot, stepping the left foot back, adding the press for mass and down the front and down. On the next inhale, leading forward to your high plank. Shoulders over the wrists again, dropping straight to your knees if you need to. Otherwise, tucking the tailbone, engaging into your core, pressing to the hands and arms with the shoulders slightly, and then lower the knees to the mat. Hashtag in Namaskar, sending the bum towards the ceiling, bending into the elbows, lowering the chest and the chin, keeping the elbows squeezing into the sides of the body. As you inhale, sliding yourself through into baby cobra or cobra, press it into the hands, and you can arch through the chest. As you exhale, making your way back to downward facing dog. This time, as you inhale, picking up the right foot, sweeping it high, coming into your three legged dog. Taking the toes on that right foot down towards the mat, trying not to open straight out. Comply onto the tip toes on the left foot, bend into that right knee, step or drag it all the way up to the top of the mat, and then lower down onto the left knee. Inhaling into your moon pose. And as you exhale, come forward to the chest. Plant your fingertips on the side of that right foot. Start to straighten out the legs. Step left foot up to the top of the mat. Inhale into your half lift. Exhale and fold them over the hips. Inhale, press into the feet. Sweep the hands up and over the head. Move up to the thumbs. Gentle back down. Exhale, the hands to the heart. Releasing, and we're ready. Moving back to Utkatasana. So feet hip width distance apart. As you inhale, sweeping the hands up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, starting to bend into the knees. So coming into chair. Um, Again, we want to see the toes poking out in front of the knees here. So if you can't bring the weight slightly further back towards the back of the foot, the toes might even lift away from the mat here. So keeping the hands reaching high. If this is really intense on the shoulders, you can take a bend into the elbows. Maybe getting a little bit deeper as you exhale. Keep knitting the lower ribs towards each other, engaging into the core. And then on the next exhale, I'm going to fold forwards over the hips. From here, bringing your hands 
um, the back of the head for cats, elbows spreading out nice and wide. And just inhale, bring yourself into a half lift. So reaching the crown of the head forwards, straightening out the legs, engaging into your core, looking for length through the spine. As you exhale, start to bend into the knees, draw the elbows towards each other, round forwards, chin towards chest. Inhale, back into a half lift. Opening the elbows out wide, engaging into the core. Exhale, bend into the knees, folding. Four more of those. Inhale, half a lift. Exhale, fold a lift. Releasing the hands. From here, there's a couple of options. You can stand straight up if you want the extra challenge. Bring yourself through a toe squat. So we're going to roll forwards to the front of the foot, coming onto the toes and lifting the heels away from the mat. Start to take the gaze forwards in front of you, reach the hands out in front, really press into the feet or the toes, engage into the core. See if you can lift all the way up, keeping the heels away from the mat. Really nice. Exhale to release. When you're ready, we're going to come back to the top of the mat if you're not there already. And here we're going to bring the hands together at the heart centre. And as we're doing Utkatasana, we're going to take a little squat. So inhaling, reaching up through the crown of the head. As you exhale, start to bend into the knees. Just come halfway, and then inhale to lift up slightly, so we're looking for more space to take the twist. As you exhale, starting to twist to the right. So you can stay up with the chest lifted. If you want to get deeper, we're going to hook this left elbow to the outside edge of the right knee. So coming into prayer twist, Check out the knees. Notice if that left knee is poking out in front of the right knee. You want to draw it back so they're in line. And we're using this left elbow to twist the torso further around the corner. So you maybe can bring your thumbs towards heart center. There's two options here from your prayer twist. Easier option is to come out, lift up. With a big step back with the left foot and then lower down onto the left knee. Then bring yourself back into your twist. So that can either be with the chest up or the left elbow hooked over the right knee. Harder option is to stay in the twist, take the gaze towards the feet, start to transfer the weight into the right foot and then lift that left foot away from the mat. When you're ready, start to send it back behind you and then lower the toes to the mat. Lowering down onto the left knee when you're ready. And then again, pressing into the hands, opening into your twist. If you want more here, option to open out the arms so the right hand reaches high, the left fingertips to the mat. Maybe gazing towards the right thumb. And when you're ready, start to press into the feet and lift the chest. So the right hand reaching back behind you, left hand reaching forwards, coming into this twisted lunge. If you want to add on here, you can think of um, twisted back bend. So the right hand can come to the right hip or anywhere down the back of that left leg. And then the right, sorry, the left hand is reaching up and over the head. Inhaling back to centre. As you exhale, you'll know the hands either side of that right foot. And press into the toes on the left foot, lift the left knee, and then spin the left foot so it's in line with the back of the mat. So we've got warrior two feet here. We want the heel of the right foot in line with the inside arch of the left foot. And then root down through the feet, bring the arms up into warrior two, grab the grass in the two. Shh. 
should find myself more into the middle of the mat. So we want a nice deep bend into the right knee, pressing into the outside edge or the whole of the left foot, but particularly the outside edge of the left foot. Palms are out at shoulder height, gazing over the middle finger of the right hand. Checking out this right knee, making sure it's not peeling into the big toe side of the foot. So keep pressing into that right foot, opening out through this right hip. On the next inhale, start to reach that right hand forwards a little, and then lower the forearm down to the top of that right thigh. We're going to make big sweeping circles with this left arm. So we're using this to keep reaching the chest up towards the ceiling, opening out through the chest. Making a few big circles. Taking one more. And then reaching this left hand up and over the head. So we're looking for a nice straight line all the way from this left foot to the fingertips of the left hand. Try not to use this right arm too much to support you. So see if we can engage uh, the side core rather than relying on this right arm too much. On the next inhale, lifting back up to your Navagasana yeah, 2, Warrior 2. And then we're going to win our hands down to the mat, either side of that right foot. Spin onto the toes on the left foot, so we're in this runner's lunge position. And we're just going to start to make these micro movements, rolling from the toes on the left foot to the ball of the foot. So really small movements, keep reaching the chest forwards, just easing into this left hip. And if you want more here, there's the option to make this movement a little bit bigger. So starting to pull the weight into that left foot and then coming onto the heel of the right foot, straightening out the leg. And then planting that right foot back down, reaching the chest forwards. Again, taking the weight back, coming onto the heel of that right foot, straightening out the leg. And then planting the foot, reaching the chest forwards. One more of those, coming back. Planting the right foot, reaching the chest forwards. From here, we're going to make our way back to the top of the mat. So you might need to shuffle this left foot in a little bit so that you can step it up to the top of the, top of the mat. Inhale into a half over. Exhaling, folding over the hips. On the next inhale, pressing into the feet. Sweeping the hands up and over the head, gazing up to the fingers. And exhaling the hands to the heart. Back to Utkatasana, so keep hip width distance apart. Inhaling the arms up. Exhaling, dropping into the knees. Checking out the toes. Make sure you can see them so the weight isn't coming forwards into the toes. We're bringing it back towards the heels. Maybe sitting a little bit deeper. And then exhaling, folding forwards over the hips. Bringing the hands to clasp along the back of the head, back and forth. Halfway lift, so inhaling, reaching the crown of the head forwards, spreading the elbows out wide, using your core to support you here. And then exhaling, bending into the knees, drawing the elbows in towards each other, rounding forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding in. One more inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding in. Releasing the hands. Taking your gaze forwards in front of you again if you want to come to your toe squat. Otherwise, just standing straight up like a normal person. So rolling forwards onto the toes, lifting the heels. Take the gaze forwards. Reach the hands out in front. Use your core. Press into the toes. Keep the heels lifted. Reach the hands up and over the head, and then exhale to release. Taking that little last bit of flow on the other side, so coming back to the top of the mat. This time, big toes touching, heels slightly apart, 
hands together at the heart center. Press the palms together. Inhale, reach up through the crown of the head. As you exhale, start to bend your knees. Come down halfway. Inhale, take a little lift. As you exhale, twist to the left. Again, stay up like this if this is enough for you. And if you want more, start to get deeper into the knees. Flip that right elbow to the outside edge of the left knee. Check out the knees. Make sure that right knee isn't popping out. Roll it back. Press the palms together to twist the torso thread around the corner. Again, if you want that easier route, just coming out of your twist, taking a step back with the right foot. If you want the harder option, taking the gaze to the feet, pull the weight into the left foot, lift the right foot away, and then step that right foot back behind you with control. Lower down into the right knee. Bring yourself back into the twist. If you're not there already, maybe opening out the arms. Left hand reaches high. Right hand comes towards the floor. As you inhale, start to reach that left hand back behind you. Right hand reaches forward. Coming into your twisted low lunge. Again, if you want that back bend, left hand can come to the left hip or anywhere down the back of that right leg. Reaching the right hand up and over the head. Inhaling back to center. Exhaling, windmilling the hands down to the other side of that left foot. When you're ready, pressing into the toes on the right foot, lifting the knee, spinning the right foot so it's in line with the back of the mat. Checking out your feet here. Heel of the left foot and mind of the inside arch of that right foot. Where are the decimals? Two, not three. Feet, when you're ready. When you're ready, I'll go into your warrior three. I'm going to spin around so you can see me. So again, just setting yourself up here. Arm, shoulder, height. Make sure you can see the toes on that left foot. Gazing over the middle finger of the left hand. On the next inhale, come forward with that left hand. Lower the forearm down towards the top of the left thigh. Try not to jump all the way down. And then start to make those big circles through the right arm. Using this arm to keep spiraling the chest towards the ceiling. And then taking that right hand up and over the head, looking for that nice straight line from the right foot to the right fingertips. Breathing here. Inhale, press into the feet, lift yourself back to your warrior two. And then wind on the hands either side of that left foot. Spin onto the toes on the right foot, into this runner's lunge position, and then again making those right hand movements forwards and backwards, so rolling from the ball of the right foot to the toes of the right foot. You can reach your the chest forwards in front of you. And again, if you want to make those bigger movements, starting to come onto the heel of the left foot. Flexing the toes back towards the left shin. You're getting a stretch into the left hamstring here and then planting the foot back down. So you're just thinking in and out. And then planting that left foot back onto the mat. Shuffle the right foot in a little bit if you need to so that you can propel it forwards to the top of the mat. Inhaling to your halfway lift, reaching the crown of the head forwards, exhaling, folding over the hips. Inhale, press into the feet, sweep the hands, up and over the head, gaze up to the thumbs, and exhale the hands to your heart centre. Really nice, well done. We're going to finish um, our standing postures with a balance. So coming into Garudasana, Eagle Pose. 
You might need a block for this one. If you don't have a block, you can use a cushion or again, a book. Anything that's just gonna give you a little bit of height for your foot. You may not need it, but if you do, having it there ready. So we're gonna come on to the right foot first. So that means that if you do need your block or whatever prop you're using, having it on the outside edge of the right foot. So we're just gonna spend a little bit of time making sure that we've got a really good foundation through that standing leg and foot. So I like to um, lift the toes on that right foot up off the mat, press into the front part of the foot and see if we can spread the toes nice and wide. Remember keeping that spread of the toes and lowering them back to the mat so that you've got a nice even spread all the way through that right standing foot. And then we're gonna take a micro bend into both knees. Bring the hands to the hips. And then come up onto the tiptoes on the left foot. When you're ready, we're starting to walk this left foot around the front of the right leg. So the toes can stay on the mat here. They can come to the block to bring um, a little bit more height into this. But eventually we're working towards wrapping that left foot around the back of the right leg. Don't worry too much about that. Just come out myself. Don't worry too much about that. We're more concerned with just getting that cross of the legs initially. So squeezing the inner thighs towards each other is gonna help you to get more wrap around with that left foot. So really engaging into the inner thighs. If that's not working for you, then just keep the toes on the block of the mat. So squeezing everything into the midline, really squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. If this is enough for you, stay here with just the legs, get used to this. If you want more, we're gonna bring the arms in as well. So we're opening them out wide and we're gonna cross the right arm on top of the left arm. So right elbow stacking on top of left elbow. Hands can stay like this, so palms facing the face. You can bring the hands to the tops of the shoulders or you might start to be able to work the palms towards each other. If you want more here, we're bringing the elbows up so they're in line with the shoulders and drawing the forearms further away from the face. Taking a drishti point, so staring at something slightly down and in front of you. I would recommend staring either to the right or the left of your arms. I find with this one that gazing forwards tends to throw you off a bit because the arms are there. We're just finding what works for you and then breathing in there. Really nice. As you exhale, releasing the arms, releasing the legs with control. And we're a really good shake out. <laughs> Letting go of any tension. If you needed your block on the other side, or that side, we're going to take it to the other side. So bring your book, book, whatever you've got to the outside edge of your left foot. Again, setting yourself up here on that standing leg and foot. So lifting the toes away from the mat, pressing to that front part of the foot, keep that spread, lower the toes back to the mat. Hands come to the hips, coming up onto the tiptoes on the right foot. Micro bend into both knees, and maybe quite a deep bend actually. And then start to walk the right toes around. So toes stay on the mat, come to the block, or if it's available for you, lifting them away, wrapping the legs around each other. Squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. So like most positions in yoga, you might have one side that's slightly more comfortable than the other. The other side's better for me. So I find it a little bit harder to wrap that foot for this side. So really just trying as best you can. If you want to add the arms in, they come out wide. And then we're crossing the, this is where I have a brain fart moment. We're crossing the uh, left arm on top of the right arm this time. So stacking the elbows, again, the hands can stay here. They can come to the tops of the shoulders. 
and we're working the palms towards each other. Bring the elbows in up so they're in line with the shoulders if you can. Draw on the forearms away. Breathing here. Move the eye out with control, unlike me. Giving the legs a good shape out. Good, well done, everyone. So, we're going to come back onto the mat now. So, coming back to the top of the mat, big toes touching, heels slightly apart. Inhaling the arms up, exhaling forward and forwards in the body. Inhaling to knock off and as you exhale, plant the hands, step both feet back to your downward facing dog. Holding out the feet. Releasing any tension, really swaying through the hips here. And taking a cleansing breath. If it feels good to do so, so inhaling into the belly, exhaling, sighing it out through the mouth. Dropping down onto the knees when you're ready, coming into child's pose. So this can be a wide leg child's pose, so we bring the knees out as wide as the mat, big toes touching, and then drop the chest in between the legs, reaching the hands out in front. Or you can come into normal Alasana child's pose. So knees together. And then forehead to the mat. Again, either hands reaching out in front, or you can take the hands back and just allow the shoulders to fall over the knees. So just using this position to regulate the breath slow down the heart rate, let everything settle in the body, let go of everything that's just happened. So coming back to that smooth, even breathing pattern. If you want to activate your child's pose a little bit more and the hands are out in front, you can press forwards and down into the hands and use that pressure to keep sending the bum further back towards the heels, creating more length through the sides of the body. On the next inhale, lifting the forehead, walking the hands back towards the knees, making our way over onto one hip, and then just taking your legs out in front. Giving them a good shake out if you need to, tapping the backs of the knees. And then making your way to the middle of your mat, reaching the hands out in front, rolling all the way down onto the spine. When you arrive, drawing the knees in towards the chest, grabbing on the shins, giving yourself a nice big squeeze. You can rock gently from side to side here on the lower back. Or you might start to make some big circles using the knees, taking them in one direction and then reversing. Just massaging out the whole of the spine. And then we'll just finish with a spinal twist, so taking the arms out wide, inhaling into the belly. And as you exhale, taking both knees over to the right. 
if the knees don't comfortably meet the floor, then you might rest them on your block or your block on your cushion. And if they're nearly there but not quite, then you can bring the right hand to the outside edge of that left knee and just gently encourage the knees further towards the mat. You're also seeing if you can drop this left shoulder towards the floor. So as you exhale, you'll be seeing if you can soften and release into that left shoulder a little more. Gaze these towards the ceiling or if it's okay for you over the left shoulder. On the next inhale, bring the knees back to center, giving yourself another squeeze if you need to. And then opening the arms back out, inhaling into the belly. As you exhale, taking the knees over to the left. Again, you might use this left hand on the outside edge of that right knee. Gaze this towards the ceiling or over the right shoulder. And this way we can soften that right shoulder towards the floor. On the next inhale, bring yourself back to center. Bring yourself one final squeeze. And if there's any final movements that you feel your body needs here, maybe coming into a seated forward fold or happy baby can be quite nice. So bending into the knees, grabbing outside edges of the feet or ankles or even the backs of the thighs. And again, you can just have a little bit of free movement here, rocking from side to side, moving into the hips a little. So if you can press the uh, lower back into the floor, tucking the chin towards the chest. So releasing from whatever position we're in now, making our way to Shavasana. So taking the legs long down the mat, feet come as wide as the mat, hands and arms all the way from the sides of the body, spreading the shoulder blades nice and wide and just finding a really comfortable position to be in for the next couple of moments. Closing down the eyes and allowing the weight of the body just to melt into the floor here. So we're seeing if we can take this last couple of moments to come to some kind of meditative state. And by that I simply mean noticing whatever is going on here for you right now. So we can use the breath as an anchor for our attention. place to come back to over and over again. So as we did at the start of the class, you might find it helpful to find that one point in the body that you can feel the breath moving most noticeably. And that point might be different to the place that you found at the start of the class when we were in a seated position. So just staying with the breath now as best you can. Knowing that it's perfectly natural for the mind to begin to wander. We're simply seeing if we can notice each time this happens. And 
imagining that thoughts are like clouds drifting in and out of your consciousness. So just watching the clouds come and go, not attaching to thoughts, trying not to allow the mind to get carried off into creating a story. Noticing the thought, maybe labeling it. So maybe looking into planning or daydreaming, maybe ruminating or some kind of anxious thought. Just noticing, noticing the quality. And noticing if you attach anything to noticing the type of thought. So if you notice that your thoughts are quite anxious, maybe seeing if that noticing is attaching more panic or more anxiety. And I'm just seeing if you can write that thought just away. Coming back over and over again to your anchor point, to the breath. When you're ready, starting to take two more deep conscious breaths now into the belly. Preparing to bring your awareness back to the room. When you're ready, bringing small movements to the body, wiggling the fingers and the tips of the toes, maybe Walking the head from side to side, circling through the ankles and the wrists. And then coming into a full body stretch, taking the hands up and over the head, drawing the feet together, pointing through the toes, reaching through the fingers. So maybe you can press the mid spine into the mat. And taking a nice big inhale into the belly. And exhaling and releasing through the mouth. Two more inhaling. Exhaling to release. One more. Exhale, release. Bending into the knees. Bring your knees up towards the chest, giving yourself one final squeeze, drawing forehead to knees to see in your practice. Coming into a tight ball, lifting the shoulders away from the mat. And then releasing, gently rolling to the right side of your body. And in your own time, Bringing yourself up to a seated position. Keeping the eyes closed if you can. And as I do in my normal classes, I'm going to finish with a quote or something for you to take with you for the rest of the day or the rest of the week. So this is a Buddhist quote. Nothing is permanent. The sun and the moon rise and then set. The bright, clear day is followed by the deep, dark night. And from hour to hour, everything changes. Very 
bring the hands together at the heart center if they're not there already. And just spending this last moment noticing how you're feeling, noticing any calm that you've created. And sending yourself some gratitude for making the time to practice today. When you're ready, bowing the forehead towards the fingertips, fluttering the eyelids open, and drawing the head back to centre. Thank you everybody for joining me. Have a lovely evening or rest of the day. Namaste.